to welcome our viewers from Kenya and around the world. You're watching Look Up TV. It's time for Politics and Power, a political show where we dissect everything politics. My name is Anne Masharia in studio today. I have Philip, who is a governance consultant, and Mary is an aspirant at Dagoreti South. Definitely, it will be interesting to hear what they have to say about the Sagana 3 meeting. Has the president been a lame duck, as the Daily said today? Well, We'll find out. La ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for making time for this interview. Did you thank watch the Ghana 3 meeting? Uh, well, I, I followed the proceedings um, at, at uh, Sagana 3. Uh, well, you have said it's, um, <laughs> um, there were profound declarations that came from uh, that meeting. Um, I, I do not see them as very new utterances. For me, I think um, the president has been saying the things he has been saying uh, in a veiled manner. So today, perhaps um, coming out as clear as uh, we have seen um, in, in the last couple of months uh, could be new. But for me, the content uh, was not new. Uh -huh. um, the fact that he has been against uh, his deputy is not new. We have seen him use proxies in that war. Uh, and so, uh, I mean, he was just coming out to um, lay claim to uh, the fight. Uh, I have not seen anything new. Um, I, I expected earth-shaking, uh, you know, pronouncements and revelations that ha as had been promised. I have not seen those. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it was just uh, a meeting like any other. But um, you would look at the ramifications of the meeting. Uh, those could uh, be something to really uh, countenance upon. All right. Speaking, uh, just hold on to that thought. Speaking of ramifications, Mary, what are the implications of the Sagana 3 meeting on Uhuru, Raila and Ruto? Thank you so much. Uh, I want to correct you. I'm vying Dagorete North, not Dagorete South. Mm -hmm. So it's good for viewers to know that because I'm expecting them to vote for Sorry me. about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. So these uh, ramifications uh, for Uhuru to declare Baba Tosha, that's a powerful thing. Um, I think some people had just hoped that he would uh, uh, still be able to just uh, uh, keep cool the way he has been without really declaring which side he was. But it's very clear that at a latter date, perhaps if his uh, deputy behaves as, as it were, then he could uh, support him. But for now, he has said it is uh, Baba. Mm -hmm. And for me, that is very powerful. Mm -hmm. And we cannot underestimate him. He has a lot of power in uh, the mountain region. Uh, I know some friends who call her Kamwana. And uh, th they are very serious about uh, Njomo's son. And so uh, while uh, a few people may still go with the DP, I still feel that is quite powerful. And uh, it will have effects in how uh, the uh, deputy Ruto uh, does his things. P perhaps he would also learn that you don't underestimate your boss. The boss is always right. You need to honor and respect your boss. You may disagree, but it is important for you never to come out to outsmart your boss. I think the 49 laws of power you should be able to read them. So I think that is what was coming out, that uh, he was quite... Uh, not able to do some things because of his deputy. All right, all right, Mary. Uh, just, you know, when, when we were, I mean, I was watching Sagana 3 meeting, at no point did the president come clear and say the, the problem or what made him part ways with Deputy President mm -hmm. William Ruto mm -hmm. and uh, for him to endorse Raila. But some of the key highlights he talked about was the Jubilee scorecard. He talked about the handshake the March 8th, mm. 2018 handshake. He also talked about Ruto and corruption. Mm. Some allegations probably that he mentioned about churches. Do you agree? Let's first mm. talk about the Jubilee scorecard mm -hmm. and the achievements of the Jubilee, given that we already have, he talked about uh, the 13 trillion. Mm -hmm. um, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, sorry. do you agree with the, with the achievement or the Jubilee do have done so far? I think um, President Uhuru Kenyatta did quite a good job, uh, knowing that one was pulling north, the other one was pulling south. He has achieved a great deal, especially infrastructure. Uh, he has done quite well. Uh, we must give him uh, 
a pat on the back. Uh, however, there have also been very many scandals, but the scandals have been not necessarily been on his side. You'll find that they are always being associated with his deputy most of the time. So that is one of the things that came out very clearly, that he was saying that uh, he wanted to do, but he kept being pulled down, you know, as it were. Um, secondly, um, the idea of uh, churches. I think he, he has been watching. I think the churches and church, not when we talk about churches, it's the church leadership. Uh, our and, church the and the donations. And, and the donations. Um, well, uh, you know, when I go to church, I don't need to carry money to give it unless if there is a fundraising. But it looks like these churches have made it every church service is a fundraising. It's supposed to be offering. And offering is put secretly in the bag so that the right hand does not know what, I mean, the left hand does not know what the right hand has just put in the bag. And so, uh, for me, that is a pollution of the altar. And uh, I think the president was telling them, don't think I don't understand spiritual matters. I know this, and I know you've been wrong. Uh, unfortunately, because of the situation we are in, quite a number of those uh, pastors also passed away. And we have known how they, it has been associated that it's because of what they have done. And so I think it's a call up uh, for the church uh, to start behaving and doing the right thing because we cannot have a, a church that is compromised, a church that doesn't have, um, you know, in the book of Psalms, chapter 89, verse 13 and 14 says, justice and righteousness are the foundation of God's throne. So the church must not stand necessarily looking like they are on one person's side, but they must stand with justice. They must stand with uh, peace. They must stand with loving. And so uh, they, they cannot be able to stand there and just uh, start uh, hula baloo over money. When they do that, uh, then they beat up their master, who is Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who did not even have a home. He didn't even have a place to lay his head. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think what it's called, and I'm a Christian, I'm a born again Christian. Mm -hmm. What the church is being called upon is, please shape up. And uh, I, I told people some time ago that uh, they went and laid hands on uh, an activity that should not have been laid hands upon. Because when you lay hands upon a person that is a thief, you become a thief with them. And so, you see, uh, it's just coming out from the president that we need to shape up as people who become Christians so that this country can be shaped because we are the same people who are into mm. tribalism. Yeah. We are the same people who are corrupt in the church. We have even brought tribalism in the church. We have uh, mishandled the widows and the orphans and the foreigners. And those are people we are supposed to take care of. So I think the president was preaching mm -hmm. to the people who are supposed to preach to him literally. And then also bringing out uh, the fact that um, the country needs to move forward. Mm -hmm. And he was giving his specific direction. I think he has been talking, but he mm -hmm. talked through proxies. So some things he did not need to bring them out. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there have been allegations of uh, attempted uh, assassinations and so on. I think some people are used to blurt it out very well. In, and this, so, in this case, you're talking about Levin. Uh, Livondo. Yeah, Livondo. <laughs> Livondo. The, the, those kind of, nobody came out to say, Livondo, shut up. You know, this thing is wrong. Those are things that have been heard with, in hushed tones. So they had to get somebody who is loud mouthed who can say it without missing what, and specifically in the Mount Kenya region. Oh, all right. Yeah. Sp speaking of Mount Kenya, uh, Phil uh, Philip, I'll, I'll, I'll just ask this. Will it, the Sagana 3 meeting, will it affect Ruto's inroad in Mount Kenya? Uh, first, before, before I answer that, uh, okay. I would like to uh, right. respond to some of the things mm -hmm. that uh, uh, Mary has mentioned. Now, um, well, while it is true that, um, you know, President Uru Kenyatta was uh, saying some, some things which were, were actually uh, true, and, you know, we are finding ourselves in a difficult position, and, and for me especially, uh, because we have two camps, two camps that are not right. Uh, I mean, 
neither of these two camps, uh, you know, uh, did the right thing or have been doing the right thing. So um, if uh, it appears as though you are, you know, speaking uh, for the other camp, then it looks as though you are speaking for the evil side. For me, I do not think that um, either President Uru Kenyatta or Deputy President William Ruto have done this country any good in the last uh, 10 years. Number one, when you have a president who speaks the truth sometimes, and you'll forgive me because I'm, I'm, I'm very brazen, uh, I, I will not mince my words. Um, when the president comes out and says, uh, I am now telling you the truth, when we have known him to be silent uh, at the times he ought to have spoken, we have known him to say things that were not true at times when he ought to have spoken the truth, uh, that places us in a very precarious position. And that is not to say that uh, the deputy president has not lied to Kenyans. Uh, this duo have lied to this country right from the time they were coming in in 2013. They came in on the foundation of a lie. In 2017, they built up their, uh, their, their, their campaigns on the foundation of a lie. The things they promised. When the president is talking about, uh, you know, having delivered, I, I, I am I'm torn apart because I don't know whether to cry or laugh because it is, uh, you know, as hilarious as it is saddening that the president is telling us that he has delivered fully on uh, the mandate that he was given by Kenyans. If uh, the Jubilee government had just delivered 10% of what they had promised in 2013 and 2017, we would be a very happy country. We would be very proud of our government. But these people have robbed us dry. It is not the deputy president alone, and I must insist, it is not him alone. These people have been robbing us dry. So the fact that you have one camp coming out, uh, you know, fast calling the other, uh, uh, you know, uh, thug, uh, does not, uh, you know, take the blame away from them. So, uh, and I disagree with, with, with Mary that... Um, you know, scandals that rocked uh, the Jubilee government did not um, affect uh, President Uru Kenyatta. I mean, we, we know of, of, of those scandals that touched on his family. Uh, you did not hear somebody saying Uhuru went to, uh, you know, the public coffers. Though, uh, I don't know, uh, I do not have that information. But we've had information about, uh, you know, people who are involved in uh, these scandals from his family. He did not come out, uh, you know, to rebuke his family on that. We've had the president give ultimatums uh, every time there's a scandal. He says, uh, within 60 days, you should have delivered, uh, you know, these people to justice. Within this timeline, how many of those people are before our court system? How many of those people have been convicted? Uh, I mean, over 10 years. And you do not have numerous figures uh, coming out, uh, you know, uh, to be convicted. So for me, uh, this is a failure, total failure, not just of the president, but the president and his deputy. So neither of them can come out and say, I am not a part of this. I, I, would, I would really like to uh, disagree on that. Number two, when we're talking about uh, Mount Kenya... Uh, and, and whether uh, his pronouncements have a bearing. Mm -hmm. um, I, in, in the past, I, I, I was one of those people who thought he had lost uh, a bearing. And if, if Mount Kenya people are honest with themselves and with the country, they would actually agree that uh, Uhuru Kenyatta as of today, uh, has lost quite a huge following. Uh, the fact that you have uh, DP Ruto carrying uh, a large chunk uh, can, it goes to show you that he has lost quite a following. And, you know, having 20,000 people, I've seen uh, reports on uh, social media that, you know, 20,000 people came to the Sagana meeting. Well, I, I didn't see the 20,000. There were many, yes. Uh, <laughs> there, were, there were uninvited guests, yes. But uh, if the president went to Nyanza today, the fact that he does not have uh, quite a following there does not mean that you will not have curious onlookers uh, storming into the president's meeting. Mm -hmm. So we cannot use that to say that he still has a following. One of the things that we also must remember is the, 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 the reality of our political landscape. Today, William Ruto has a following in Drift Valley. Uh, Salia Mdavadi has a small following in, in Vihiga. Uh, Wetangula has a small following in Bungoma. Kalonzo in, in North East and, and so forth. It is not because these people have done marvelous things for their people. It is because we are still uh, trapped in the traditional African uh, setup of leadership. 
you have uh, certain communities that listen to clan elders you have certain communities that listen to a particular individual and we have uh, largely not uh, you know driven ourselves out of uh, you know that that kind of setup so the fact that uhuru kenyatta is the de facto leader of of mount kenya uh, is is without question because i mean mount kenya has been looking up to an individual the fact that uh, william ruto is almost the de facto leader of rift valley uh, that goes without saying so it is not because these people are, are good leaders it it has nothing to do with leadership it has nothing to do with development in those areas it is just because this is the way we have been cultured this is the way we have been doing our, our politics uh, for a long time uh, and one would be forgiven to think that in our current democratic space uh, we are now going back to the Littleton uh, Constitution uh, or the Lennox Boyd Constitution, uh, which was very exclusive uh, because the, the Littleton Constitution and the Lennox Boyd Constitution that came before the Lancaster Constitution that gave birth to our Independence Constitution uh, only provided that uh, you had representatives from certain regions. Yeah. So it looks like we are going back there. So I, I, I do not see why we are not intent on opening up our democratic space, on opening our mindsets up for uh, a global uh, you know leadership uh, um, uh, setup rather than continuing to fight within uh, you know uh, or, or, or aligned uh, within those uh, tribes that we are and and uh, if if we went that direction then let us admit to ourselves that we are not going for democracy as we know it let us go back then to uh, you know Lennox Boyd and Littleton where you have uh, people from uh, different regions they uh, get elected by their tribes and then they get to the national table as our leaders are calling it today. Philip, so are you saying President Uru Kenyatta still mm -hmm. has a huge following in Mount Kenya? Can we quote you saying that? I'm not saying that is his following. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that uh, Mount Kenya rally around one individual. That individual uh, coincidentally is President Uru Kenyatta. Uh, it might change by the way uh, because uh, if, if things change in the political landscape of Mount Kenya within the, the next couple of months, even two months, uh, Mount Kenya could, uh, you know, uh, choose to rally around another individual who would have risen up, though that is far-fetched. But there is a following not really around Uhuru Kenyatta, but around the interests that merge with Mount Kenya. Mount Kenya does not look at uh, who is leading, but what that leadership portends for them. So if uh, the person who is leading uh, is not in government, uh, they would not follow that individual. Mary, do you agree with what Philip has said? A bit, but um, it's important for us to know that uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta has a following, and it's not a small one. Um, the fact that even the people just, uh, you know, legged in, as if I'm allowed to use that, they just, they were just telling the world that we are with this guy and we want to hear what he's saying. Mm -hmm. we, we are not going to take it like it's uh, an official meeting where some people are sitting, important VIPs and so on. We as the Mwananchi of Mount Kenya, we are interested in what is happening here. And it was a backup. It is like we are with you. Mm -hmm. It, because I know also people who have held meetings there and people expected people to come and there was nobody in the field. I, I have seen it uh, with a few people just there. So I think the following and uh, I watched uh, the group marching, it was quite a, a powerful thing. I think those are not people who are idlers. They, they don't go there to idle. Uh, to, it, it was a, a decision they made, left their work and everything. Uh, so to an extent, I, I don't think so. And I, I, I know Mount Kenya will take a different shape. He may not have said so much, but uh, there is a way also people communicate within the community without necessarily letting everybody else to know what is within. I think uh, the Mount Kenya people, knowing who they are, they already know what their son has gone through. And so they don't need again to go there and be told. He has, be, he has said, can we, I, I, we've watched him say, can we stop politicking and do work? They had the four, four, the, the, the four agenda, including housing, which, which he has done quite a bit. The houses that have already been built all over the country, some in Mombasa, uh -huh. some in, in Nairobi here and in the estate. But uh, the person uh, was, uh, who is supposed to deputize 
never had went ahead. The, the, can we stop abusing? I think what came out very clearly and which was very important is that there was nothing that uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta did about the handshake that he did not let his deputy know. But when he would go to the people, he was so determined to start his campaign so early, it will look like it has been done in his back. And I think that is insubordination. Uh, I think if this constitution hadn't uh, tied the two together, the new 2010 constitution ties them together, I think he would have been shown the door earlier than before. So um, we are looking at a situation where we are saying that uh, uh, the landscape of the country has changed. Uh, Baba has never really, there are three elections or two elections or so. He has never really lost. Just uh, being told by Uhuru that now Tosha, he will definitely get this. And uh, I think it's very important for Deputy President to know that he's a great son of this country and uh, he needs to learn. It is important for somebody to learn. Sit down and know that your boss your person must be honored and must be respected. Mm. Uh, I have been listening to some stories of uh, the book of Esther. And uh, there is a man called uh, Selman Joshua. And he says that honor precedes favor. If you don't honor people, you will not expect them to be there to honor you. Esther was just taken because of honor. Okay. and which preceded okay. favor. Uh, so what I'm, uh, I'm saying is it's important for him to, next time, actually what he was telling him, change your character, change your behavior. Mm -hmm. You cannot outshine your boss. Mm -hmm. You cannot overlook your boss and expect that things will go on as usual. Because in my opinion, the deputy president had this uh, presidency in his hand. He actually messed it up himself. And uh, it is gone, it is gone. But he can remedy himself because he's still young. By, re God by remedy, Mary, you mean what? How remedy himself, but because even if he becomes, uh, 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 if, he, if he becomes, because, okay, he's definitely, uh, Baba will not choose him for deputy. So as he sits outside, he, he should sit there thinking, where did I go wrong? And it is not a bad thing. Every, even myself, I'm not saying because of him. We are all humans. So you sit down and uh, retrospectively think, where did I go wrong? What could I have done that I, I shouldn't have done? What could I have done that I, I meant to do and I didn't do it? Or I did it with good motivation, but it did come out well. So you sit down and ret retrospectively think about what you've done. And I, I think that is what the president with wisdom was telling him. And that, for me, it's a lot of maturity for the president. For him not to have just said, I have nothing to do with this guy. I, I, he's not somebody anybody can work. He actually gave him a redemptive uh, rope. That means that is, you still have chance mm -hmm. which you can be able to remedy and the peoples of Kenya can still choose you in the future. Okay. Uh, and just uh, uh, okay, briefly before you proceed, uh, there's this narrative, and I'm hearing Mary uh, talk about it um, in in a matter that is very in a manner that is very conclusive, mm -hmm. and you can hear that from the president's side also, and from uh, Azimio Lomoja's side. And I must uh, mention that I am not a DP supporter; I mm -hmm. do not support him in any way. But for one side to speak as though they have already won this thing. Um, should really bother Kenyans. Because one of the things, and, and Mary has rightfully mentioned, uh, we were told that the handshake was about righting the wrongs that uh, we had in the past. And one of those was um, electoral uh, justice, uh, or uh, handling the issue of electoral injustice. But we have a side here that is not now keen on handling electoral injustice, but they are comfortable because they are on the side of the riggers. So you have uh, railroad diggers come very confident that they are going to win. In fact, it's not just confidence. Uh, for them, it is, it is cast in stone that they are going to win this thing. And uh, you can hear Mary advising the deputy president, uh, you know, to be humble as he stays in the cold post <laughs> August uh, of this year. Uh, and that, that bothers me because uh, I thought we are getting into an election.
uh, and an election means that you you know people are exercising uh, their right of universal suffrage and it can go either way but one camp does not think so one camp thinks that uh, you know this thing is is taken and and for me that is not a path that we should go we saw that in 2017 because there are people who are confident that they are taking this thing because they uh, were handling the machinery of the elections and if we go that direction we will have helped a side that was uh, that uh, that uh, that appeared uh, you know pinched in 2017 and 2013 and 2007 and continue ostracizing another side and that is uh, you know dp william ruto's camp which has a following and part of that following is a tribal following mm -hmm. so we we cannot proceed in that manner it it can be exciting to those camps but we cannot proceed in that manner if you want lasting peace in this nation uh, we, we i didn't mention anything to do with rigging no, that, that, Baba, that, that is Baba, me mentioning Baba in Farley from what won, you, you... And, we, and everybody, even internationally, people know. So why, why uh, hasn't uh, he been president? Uh, uh, because he has been rigged out, right? Uh, yeah, but, but I and think that, the way that, it came that, out, it that, was that like was you influence. were saying mm. that we are going to rig. We are not going to rig. We are going to go to the well, neighbors. Uh, and we know... That, that, that is, uh, that is the only moment, way you can be assured let of a me, victory. Let me, let me finish my line of thought. Mm -hmm. We, we are not, the way you said it was like it, we are the ones who are going to rig. We are not going to rig. Baba is going to go to the elections and we are going to vote. And now with the Kalonzo on his side, I am a Maragoli, by the way. I am not going to vote for, uh, for Musalia because he didn't consult us. And the Maragolis rang me, a lot of them both in Lugari where I stay now and in Vihiga. And they said, what has happened to our son? So the, the, the fact that we are and, and they are saying it openly, that it is their stomachs that have taken them. They haven't gone with the lawyers. They may get to a few band of people. So what I'm saying is the Western people, as I sit here, they are still with Baba, plus Kalonzo, plus uh, Uhurus, and uh, he just and uh, we, we okay. wish we wish uh, uh, deputy president all the best all but right, right. Uh, we can tell that uh, baba will still win so it's not a matter of rigging right. i definitely don't go for rigging we are going for right elections we want the elections to be uh, fair and we want them to be done well and baba has always won so and uh, people just uh, including people who we well know we don't want to mention it live TV. okay okay but mary okay mary but i would want to hear your thoughts uh, on this is sagana meeting enough to market Riley in mount kenya is, is uh, sagana meeting was uh, the president uh, as uh, as we have already given the endorsement that the, the endorsement made. is uh, is a good thing because uh, as one of the mount kenya people said we are the ones who started the propaganda that this uh, guy is bad and we knew he wasn't very bad but we started that propaganda but that and we history. are the same people who are going to go back to our people and tell them that that was propaganda it is not real but Mary, so we we should not also not forget the the relationship that between uhuru and raila over the years yes they've it, been at he, and he has accepted it he didn't say he said even he used to abuse him he has abused him at times but um and I listened to these two people very keenly. At one time, Uhuru, Uhuru, our president said, it was not easy for us to start that thing of uh, handshake. We sat for four hours drinking water and looking at each other and pacing the room. So uh, they have come from far. And by the way, I think many of us, especially the young Kenyans, don't know. This family of Odinga and the family of uh, uh, Kenyatta, <laughs> they have been very close friends. I hear uh, uh, Raila used to carry Uhuru on his back when they were living close, especially in the coast. So they are not enemies. It's politics. And uh, this should also go to our Kenyan people when we talk about peace during these elections. We should not take it personally where we start taking a panga to hack each other to death. But it is not a matter of that. We can still be ideologically in disagreement, but still be hospitable and know that Mary is for Baba. Me, I am for DP, but we can still be neighbors next door. So does that mean that the meeting is good enough for, to warm out? But it is, it's a powerful meeting. It's, definitely we will need to do more. But uh, as we, somebody said, the Mount Kenya people cannot be, they cannot be bought. They can also just be, allow themselves to be rented for a short while. So we will have to have 
uh, and especially Baba, we will have to make the uh, Mount Kenya people to know what is there for them. And uh, I believe there are strategies and the plans to that effect. By, by, by mean what is there for them, is it, uh, are we, are we what are that they city? gaining out of uh, his are we, presidency? Are, we getting, uh, are you talking about a vice president from the region? Vice president isn't even enough, but that could be one of them. Uh, a deputy president, rather, it's, it could be one of them. But uh, we are thinking about economics. I think if we have people who are enterprising in this country, I think uh, the Mount Kenya people leads. And because of uh, COVID, uh, because of w what the country has gone through, their businesses have really been affected because Kenyans did not even have enough. So even buying clothes and buying some of these things from their shops, it was impossible. So uh, I think the, the, the Mount Kenya people will be looking. What ha will Baba be able to do for the economy so that it can make us start standing and that is just not mount kenya i think the whole country we are looking forward what can what can be done by the next government that is coming in power so that the economy is back on its feet so uh, that is a way of looking at it mm. and then also it's a matter of uh, de devolution uh, um, there is i think a point uh, my brother here had talked about devolution being tribal and going back to pre-independence days constitution. No way. I participated in the constitution making of bombers from the time of inception with the Yashpal guy. And it was very clear that throughout the years um, we had started having a, cons a very well consolidated center. That is everything was being done from Nairobi by the national government. And so people demanded for two things for in this new constitution and era. Uh, one, we needed to have the decentralization of resources okay. to decentralization of power. And that has come out very well. In fact, if anybody started to say that devolution should be stopped, Kenyans will not vote right. for them. All right, Mary. May, uh, Philip, do you, uh, do you, is Sagana meeting enough to market Raila in Mount Kenya? Yeah, first, uh, yeah, I write a reply uh, before, uh, as I answer that. Mm. Um, for me, I, I, see, I see two problems. One is uh, what I would term as a collective huge as, as, as Kenyans. And um, I think we are sort of, uh, you know, competing with the, with the warthogs uh, in this sense that we have a failing memory. We seem to take ourselves into uh, induced amnesia. Uh, because the way we engage with these politicians today does not really show that we have uh, had any experience with them, even though they have been on this political landscape for a very long time. When a politician today is speaking, and, and now that we are talking about uh, the president uh, and the former prime minister and deputy president William Ruto, these are people who have been on this political landscape for a very long time. Uh, they are people who have uh, participated in uh, you know, uh, bringing the country uh, to where it is now. And this is the reality. Uh, the other day, we, we were talking about lowering food prices. I mean, that uh, the hashtag may have been uh, promoted by certain quarters. But that, that is the reality of where we are as a country. And if we do not, uh, you know, accept that we are at a bad place, then we'll probably not be uh, very concerted in changing the cause of this country. And so for me, uh, when the politician today is talking about where he wants to take this country tomorrow, we must remember where he has taken us, uh, you know, in the years uh, before. So when Uhuru Kenyatta is talking about where he wants this country to go and who he thinks has the best uh, interest of uh, this country at heart, when did he discover this? When did he discover that Raila Odinga is, has the best interest of this country uh, at heart? Was it in 2002 when uh, he, uh, he was pitted against him in, in, in NARC? Was it in 2007 when he was on the other side? Was it in 2013? Why didn't he discover that in 2017? I mean, he didn't tell us when he discovered that uh, because if he has known all this uh, all through then why would you uh, put uh, the man in uh, in the place you put him uh, on the streets together with his supporters why would you do that mm -hmm. these are the questions that uh, the people of mount kenya should be asking the president what was happening then you cannot uh, you know uh, blame dp ruto I, I had him say that uh, you know ruto was telling him to uh, you know uh, kangumo and all these things were happening that goes uh, you know that is an indictment on his leadership 
qualities. So for me, Kenyans need to be very clear. And not just the people of Mount Kenya, the whole country. Uh -huh. uh, and one of the unfortunate things about these Saganas, uh, one, two, three, and four, if uh, one was to come uh, thereafter, is the fact that when the president feels he needs to communicate something to the country, he goes and calls a meeting of Mount Kenya. Uh, I mean, why haven't we seen the president going to uh, coast, for example, and calling that, you know, that kind of a meeting? He's very comfortable, uh, you know, with uh, people from Mount Kenya. While that may um, be seen as a very, uh, you know, good political move, but as a symbol of national unity, the president should have, uh, and not just this year, but in the years before, he should have really rallied the country uh, alongside him and not just you know we are now finding out <laughs> information uh, from a meeting that was meant for for the house uh, as, as as they call it and, and that is a failure on leadership whether sagana 3 is enough uh, for um Raila Odinga, I, I thought that um, um, a few months ago i thought um Raila Odinga was was not sellable in mount kenya I do not know anymore because, I mean, Kenyans uh, appear to be very shifty, not just Mount Kenya. Kenyans will tell you they are tired with leadership today. And tomorrow, on election day, they will vote in the same people who have robbed them off. I mean, how many thugs are in parliament? How many thugs are going to get into parliament in 2022? These are the realities we should be talking about. If we, we are not serious about where we want to go, we will get excited with this political season. We will get the handouts we, uh, you know, we are used to getting. These meetings that uh, are being called with the exception of those who trooped in out of curiosity, even with the president's meeting, people are paid. Uh, they call them allowances. But we know, the politicians know, uh, Kenyans know that they are paid to attend these meetings. So if we are not serious with ourselves, and, and uh, I mean, it, it may sound very harsh, mm -hmm. but if we are not serious with where we want this country to go, we'll be talking about these issues in 2027. Because the people who have been there before, the people who have done nothing for this country, will still get into office and we would have have given them the leeway to rob us even more. All right. May, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Mary and Philip, thank you so mm. much for uh, the insights you provided in Sagana 3 meeting, mm. uh, the highlights, the handshake, Jubilee scorecard, your thoughts. And I'm pretty sure uh, that from the comments online, I could see uh, people talking about it. And I'm thankful for uh, even showing up for this interview. I just hope and believe that we've been able to break down what we had to do in the Sagana Three meetings. This has been politics and power, and uh, we it comes every Wednesday, and we hope that um, it'll be it'll keep us company every Wednesday. My name is Anwar Sharia. Our sign language interpreter, interpreter sorry, has been Josephine Oko. Thank you so much. Good night, and God bless.